hello. Welcome to this lesson on the activity series. The question of the day, what is metallic character? I like to define metallic character as the willingness to lose electrons. So the larger a metal is or um, the fewer valence electrons it has, the more willing it is to lose those valence electrons. And we can more or less rank this on the activity series. Now, it's not just metallic character and willingness to lose electrons. There are a few other factors that can be summarized in this activity series, but largely the things at the top of this list are very reactive and the things at the bottom of this list are not so reactive. So the way that we use this for redox reactions is that the things at the top of the list are more likely going to be anodes because they want to lose electrons and they are ferociously wanting to lose electrons. So the things at the top are the best losers, which makes them the best anodes. The things at the bottom of the list are the least willing to lose electrons, and that is going to make them pretty good cathodes because it is a lot easier to have them gain electrons. So they're just not that good at losing electrons. Um, so we would define them as less active. If you look at the activity series, you can see in the list of metals, we have hydrogen listed there. And that is certainly weird because hydrogen is not a metal. But the reason it's there is because hydrogen most of the time is going to take on that plus one charge, meaning that it loses electrons, just like the metals. So it is put there, but also because these metals were compared to hydrogen in their activity when they were ranked in this activity series. So the only ones that are less active than hydrogen are copper, silver, and gold. And if you look at the periodic table, all three of those metals can be found in group 11, and those are typically called the coinage metals because way back in the day, we used to make coins out of copper, silver, and gold. So um, that's because they are very stable metals. They don't really like to be oxidized. They don't tarnish very easily. They're not super reactive, um, but the things at the top of the list are the exact opposite. They're very reactive, oxidize in air very easily. Um, some of them you can't even find in their elemental form, like lithium, for instance, almost instantly oxidizes. So you'll only ever find it, like the closest you can get is lithium oxide. Um, we actually usually store that in a test tube or a beaker under oil so that it can't react with oxygen. On the second half of the activity series, you will also see that we have a list of non-metals and the uh, same kind of concept here, except they're looking to gain electrons. Um, so your non-metals at the top of that list, you would have fluorine, the bottom of the list, you have iodine. Other than that, we don't typically put the other non-metals on the activity series. In a redox context, you can use the activity series to quickly determine which is an anode and which is a cathode uh, in reference to your metals. The ones at the top of the list, remember, are the good losers, so they will make great anodes, and the things at the bottom of the list are not so great at losing, so they make good cathodes. So looking at these three pairs, you should be able to determine which is the anode and which is the cathode. Lithium is at the tippy top of the list, and gold is at the very bottom of the list, meaning that lithium in this pair would be the anode and gold would be the cathode. In zinc and calcium, zinc is lower on the list than calcium, meaning that zinc would make uh, the cathode in the pairing and calcium would be the anode in that particular pairing. And then finally, barium and lead, not a common battery, um, but let's just say that we made one. And in that case, because barium is higher on the list than lead, barium would be the anode and lead would be the cathode. You can also use the activity series to determine if a single replacement reaction is actually possible the way that it's written on paper. Just because we write things on paper does not make them true. I could make myself queen of the universe on a piece of paper, but that does not mean that it's true. And the same thing happens with chemical reactions and equations. Um, so we can take a look at that. If we have a lone element, so in this sample here, we would be looking at element A, if that element is higher on the activity series than the element it is looking to replace, it will successfully replace that element. So in this case, we can see A plus BC yields AC plus B. In this case, it's very clear that A is a metal because it is kicking out B, the other metal, and taking its place. So in this case, we're talking about metals. 
this can also be true for nonmetals. If A were to replace C, that means we have a nonmetal replacing another nonmetal. So it would depend whether it was a metal or nonmetal, which side of the activity series you looked at. Here we have two sample reactions. The first up, we have potassium trying to replace calcium in calcium chloride. Potassium is higher up on the list than calcium, so it is able to kick the calcium out of that chlorine uh, compound and take its place. On the bottom, we have magnesium trying to take the place of sodium in a chloride compound, and magnesium is lower in the activity series than sodium, so it's not strong enough or tough enough to go in and tell sodium to get lost. Uh, so that reaction just can't happen. It does not happen as it is written. This is the two primary ways that we use the activity series. I typically teach this with redox because I teach it more so in the redox context. Uh, using it to determine anodes and cathodes. So if you are interested in that, this will apply to voltaic cells and you should um, take a look at the voltaic cells video to make sure that you feel good about it because this is really gonna help if you have issues determining anodes and cathodes in those voltaic cells. All right, that's everything. Please leave any questions you have in the comment section below the video. Subscribe so you don't miss the next lesson and I'll see you there. Bye.